one little thing before we get into the uh, main body of the brigade activation. Um, Mike Welker, who's the who's the game developer, commented on a couple of videos and pointed out some things. Uh, one of which was this paragraph that I did not look at. I was looking at the uh, at this setup, and I didn't read this paragraph carefully. So I, I set this all up as it's um, set out with each of the wings for the allied side, but I failed to look at this paragraph here. It talked about the cavalry support and reserve. So I, I made a little bit of uh, adjustment, um, realizing that, especially in this area on the, on the, uh, let's see if we can zoom in. Right in here. Um, these these cavalry brigades are in support. I don't have any reserve, um, so I just shifted. I had originally this Danish cavalry up here, but the the cavalry should all all be in either support or reserve, according to that paragraph. Historically, um, and so just shifted it back so they were not even with the front line but that should help cover this flank here um, and then the only other thing he commented on which was helpful and it does make sense um, because since the front line here turns and angles sorry for the shadow um, that that means that you don't have to think totally directional you know north south east west but more of how the battle line fits in terms of um, who's in the front line and where you can position the support and reserve brigades so um, these front line brigades here are angled this way so then instead of thinking this is too far forward as a support brigade it really is just behind so I think everybody is going to be like this thinking this way um, and the rest of the wings shouldn't be any problem because they're pretty much straight across um, I think that's it 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 did make a little adjustment with having cavalry um, historically this is this is the cavalry that broke through in the center on the plains uh, wing so we'll see what happens with that but I'm, I'll now get into the brigade activation all right here we go with the main part of the game and that's the brigade activation. Um, if you look at page seven in the rule book, or if you're unfamiliar with this, it looks complicated, but it's really not. Um, so the first priority is you look at um, any brigades that are under charge counters. Uh, and since there are none, we don't have to worry about that. But if, if we had gone through a turn or two and some brigades still had charge counters on them, you the, the side that had the most charge counters would go first. And then you just alternate those brigades until you finished all the brigades that had charge counters already on them at the beginning of the turn. Um, and obviously if if one side had three charge counters marked and one had one you'd start with the three and then the other side would get their one and then the other side would have two more in a row so that's just, it just alternates back and forth until you taken care of all the brigades that have charge counters already on them at the beginning of the turn it's not the ones who um, 
change their orders during the turn. Okay, so then you, after you've done all the charge counter brigades, you go to any ones who have march orders, which is in this case every brigade on the map. And as you can see, there's going to be a lot. If you swing over here, that's a lot of brigades. But obviously, those in reserve and those in support probably aren't going to move since um, they're in place and unless they're transferring or switching with another brigade um, there's really not a lot for them to do at least that's how I see it um, so you're really looking only at frontline units um, and you simply um, once a brigade activates you'll just flip this counter over and um, it, it says it has an F on it on the back it just means finished all right <clears throat> now in this case I rolled oh sorry Ed, since since we didn't have any anybody have more charge counters than the other side then you just roll for um, who goes first in the turn and then you'll alternate back and forth until everybody's activated or passed. Uh, you could you could take a brigade counter and, and let me back up a second. The, I rolled the dice and the allied side actually got the higher roll so they would go first but since they're kind of on the defensive and they're going to be more counter-attacking that they don't want to come out of their fortifications and uh, they're outnumbered so they'll be playing back so I simply um, passed on took one of these whoops the Spanish infantry and just flipped it um, okay so that that's finished um, essentially it's passing and then um, it goes to the French side and just for the sake of argument um, we will go with um, okay I think I'm going to activate this brigade here um, that is the uh, Russia, oh boy, Roche Guillon Infantry Brigade, and I'm just going to do a march order or continue the march order. Um, and I'm going to tell you why here. Um, when you switch to charge orders. the only attacks you can make are on those priorities hexes so you see on the infantry if there's somebody in the flank or in the rear um, that's second priority first priority is whoever's in right directly in front of you and the third priority is two hexes away so none of these infantry units can actually do a charge if I now, I, if I switch to a charge, I don't have any pr um, units in the priority hexes, so it, it would end up being like a march order. So um, I think it doesn't really help me to switch to charge. Um, unless I'm a little mistaken about that, and I should ask Mike. Um, if I switch to charge order here, but I couldn't actually attack that those hexes because they're out of the priority hexes, um, and then could I move one forward, one hex forward, because it's going to be treated like a march order, and then in the subsequent turn I'd already be in the charge for me or charge order, um, and. I wouldn't have to roll for it. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Um, I guess I could see the possibility of um, 
you know, switching these to charge order, there's no priority, but they're sending them forward part of the way, and then the next turn they'll go all the way. I don't know. Um, but I, I'll activate that particular brigade, flip it over over here on the other chart, and then move them forward. I'm not going to go the whole distance. Um, I think just the one hex and then to here for that one. Um, and that'll be their move. And then it would go back to the other side and I think um, we'll just flip one of the cavalry, kind of a pass. Now notice if if there are two passes in a row, the turn would end, but the French do not want to have that happen. So they're going to keep going. The, the Allied side could pass quite a bit. And as long as the French keep activating and moving and charging, whatever, uh, they'll be, the turn will continue. Um, and then they'll activate the Dalincourt, Dalincourt, um, and move them forward. Um, another thing I want to find out about how rigid these wing lines are. Um, I don't think they can attack against another wing without transferring, but that's another question. Um, we will again pass on the other side. And then um, I suppose I could, hmm. I don't know. No, I'll, that'll be a pass. And then let's do a, an actual, we'll try to charge here and roll for this El Bergotti. Um, I can influence the roll. I'm going to add uh, one of my, my wing commander to that roll. So it'll subtract one from the guy. And he got a uh, five, which is minus one, let's see, which is four, and that's what you need to switch to charge order okay so we've got our first brigade that is under charge orders so they will go here and they will attack so you when you activate a brigade um, you finish moving it if there's no attack you're done um, if you're charging you move this is this is the third priority um, hexes for the charge and um, then we do the attack all right now the first big thing you have to understand in this style of combat is the um, initial volley and it's interesting because the initial volley has an automatic result, but it also um, hinders, it, it, I could say damage, damages the, um, the unit that's firing, but you'll see what happens here. Um, now I wanna also make note that one thing you have to be concerned with um, when you're going up against other units is your flanks. And in this game, the stacking, you get to do two infantry battalions in a hex, but the one on the top is the one that's firing, and the one on the bottom is basically r refusing the flanks um, or the flank. So if this if this unit wasn't there and it was just a single unit, his flank would be exposed 
and that's a problem in the fire combat. Um, I'll flip this as probably not going to matter. Um, now, if you have two on top, and you have another unit um, to the other side. Both of his flanks are fine. Both of his flanks are fine. This one has a problem. Um, first of all, th this side is fine, but technically this flank is open. Um, so that's gonna hurt in the fire combat. Oh, sorry, that's the, I just crossed the line over us. Uh, gotta put him back. Um, we better do it like this. <laughs> I hope that was okay. Yeah, sorry. This is my own unit here. Um, so in this setup, um, all the flanks would be fine. Um, the same for the Allied side. These uh, Dan Dutch units, the flanks would be fine. Um, otherwise, you have some. Um, added um, added combat values to the the other side if your flanks are open or one or one or more of the flanks are open okay so everybody's uh, moved we're going to decide how, how to attack you have to if you're adjacent like this you can't gang up if there's another unit here so basically it's going to be here, here, and here. I should use my left hand. One, two, three. So let's just go left to right. Um, oh, I was on initial volley here. Um, the first thing you do is decide if you're going to do an initial volley. And that simply is a, a firing attack where you you most of these all of these units are prepared for one really really good um, and set volley of fire and once they've used that up their fire effectiveness goes down so if I choose to use the initial volume and I'm going to do it with all of them just for the sake of argument um, just to show how it's done you simply attack that unit and it's automatically um, flipped. It, has, it gets a casualty right away. But on the other hand, you also get flipped. So you're not necessarily, you're not losing, um, losing personnel, you're losing effectiveness of combat. So this number three the combat value goes down to two. Um, so it's a little, it's a bit of a two-edged sword there. Um, now what's interesting is you do the initial volley, which I did, and everybody stays in place because that was not the last, um, last point of combat value. So he's still around. Um, and then you actually do the combat as well. So there's initial volley. Once you've used your initial volley, you can't use it again. Um, notice he's not going to be able to use his initial volley. Um, I'm going to actually do one, I think, one of these not using the initial volley. Um, to show you how the the um, the other side can counterattack. Um, okay, so now we just do a regular combat, and that is a pretty easy table. You take the um, total combat value. He has two. Um, there's no. There are no flanks issues at all, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, 
so he's got two the Dutch unit has two but he's also um, behind the those breastworks so that's another two as you can see this is not going to be good for the attacker but we're going to do it anyway um, so now we have two versus four and since it's defender defender superior you look at the minus two on this, this side and you roll a die and I, that's not going to be good that's an eight so eight for the defender is ar and ar is just retreats one hex so they have to go back and now they can go forward but if they wanted to but they're not going to um now i have to check something about the retreat okay so in actuality um this unit was considered refu refusing the flank so they're on the side so they're not considered directly behind so they're not affected by the retreat this one just goes straight back so this this bottom unit is still there um, and then we'll do the next one um, so let's do another um, hmm. yeah, yeah. let's do an um, let's just do a regular attack I'm gonna show you something in the, about initial volleys and charge orders what you can do on the other side of the counterattack so we'll just do a regular attack we won't do the initial volley yet so three versus five is um, minus two again He's got a two on the minus two is firefight. Okay, that's uh, gonna, gonna be fun. So, so there's a firefight between those two hexes. Do grab a um, counter and put it like that. They're basically locked together unless one um, fall, uh, chooses to retreat. Um, oops, wrong one. Sorry, this one. Time to get the tweezers out. Okay. And then this one will do the initial volley here. So it uses this up. So now it's down to two. And this one is down to three. Um, so now minus one plus another minus two. So that's minus three. And I rolled a two, which is probably a firefight. I have to grab my sheet. Um, yes, another firefight. Okay, well then I might not be able to demonstrate how this works. Actually, I, I think I will with with this side. Um, so that brigade activation is done. And then I would go to the other, other side and I'm going to activate um, this Dutch Nassau brigade. Okay, I'm gonna flip it. No. even though this is not under charge order this brigade is under charge order and so i wonder if i can switch the yeah this is what i was getting at the very right where it says important probably because it's important um and it talks about changing to a charge order at the very end 
it says uh, units not under a charge order that start their activation adjacent to enemy units that are, are under a charge order may voluntarily attack, essentially a counterattack. So what I'm going to do is use the march order. You can use all of your movement points to switch places. And that's what we'll do. And then um, these are locked in a firefight anyway. So, And then I'll use, mm, should I use the initial volley? Sure, why not? So I'll use the initial volley against this one that they just both flip. And then we go two against two um, because The uh, the breastworks don't affect the attack or the other side. I don't think we'll let it. Uh, actually, hmm. If um, I guess, do you have to be behind? Hmm. It's just hex side. Um. Yeah, so maybe that was stupid. <laughs> and we have to go through with it because we did the initial volley. So um, two against two, two against four, because he is on the other side of the hex, I guess. I'm not sure how logical it is, but we'll do it. That's minus two. And that's a seven. Minus two on the seven is, um, uh oh, R1N. Oh, that's count. Oh, well, it helped to be on the correct side. <laughs> um, yeah, just an AR, a retreat. So, it's not affected, doesn't affect this unit, so I just go back one. And that's the end of their activation. And then you'd go back and forth, um, basically using most of the frontline units if you choose to, and then uh, that would be the end of the turn. We get to the, the next part, phase of the turn. Um, so I'll do all that and then come back and show you the results of where where the lines stand. Um, but that that just gives you an idea of of what an um, activation would look like if there was if a brigade was in or switched to charge orders. So we ended up with some damage, mostly because of the volleys, and then a couple of retreats, and then two firefights. They are basically locked in, in battle until they can be attacked by other units. Um, but the only way they can come out of it is if one or the other side um, switches to dress rank and moves back one hex, basically kind of reforming. So they're just at it until they decide they're not going to be anymore. Okay, we'll come back after we've finished all the activations.